our triune God, Creator, Redeemer, and Sanctifier, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, in the communion with the Holy Spirit, be with you all. A summer storm. You can feel it in the air on a hot day as the mugginess seems to close in around you and the rumbles of distant thunder toy with the edge of your hearing. After a while, the sky begins to turn gray and the breezes stir fitfully. And at last, with a roar of thunder and gusts of wind in a darkened sky, the storm is upon you. Rain pours, wind howls, Lightning and thunder startle you from your chair, and you feel as if you are alone on an island of familiarity, while outside, the familiar has turned into a wet, terrifying cacophony of flying leaves, window-drenching water, with flashes of blinding light to punctuate the experience. Where do storms come from? Science tells us that when warm, moist air rises into the atmosphere, it becomes cooled, loses some of its moisture in the form of water droplets, sinks back down again, is rewarmed, and repeats this process again. This cycle of rising and falling forms a convection cell, which can then form anything from a single, unassuming cloud to an ordinary thunderstorm, to a squall line of multiple thunderstorm cells hundreds of miles long, to a giant supercell, complete with clouds rising 11 miles into the atmosphere and updraft winds of 175 miles per hour. As the storm forms from warm air rising, rain begins to fall because the rising air can no longer keep the heavy droplets aloft. Furthermore, as the storm reaches its mature phase, The air particles zooming past each other build up an electric charge, and lightning is formed. As the lightning moves, either within or between clouds, or from the cloud to the ground, 
It heats up the air around it to 54,000 degrees Fahrenheit, causing the air to rapidly expand, forming the shock wave that we call thunder. But this process cannot proceed indefinitely. Eventually, the downdrafts become stronger than the updrafts, warm air can no longer rise, and water droplets can no longer form. The storm weakens, and the cloud disappears from bottom to top in a flurry of light rain. The storms of our lives come like this, and sometimes we feel ourselves lost in a sea of dashing waves, howling gales, and pounding rain, or blown on the wind with the heaving wet branches and growling thunder. It can seem that there is nothing familiar to cling to, nothing we can take hold of without slipping off, and the constant cracks of thunder and lightning put us on edge, making it extremely difficult to think. How do we weather such storms? Perhaps nature, again, might have a few suggestions. Like bison, we could head into the storm, not away from it, knowing that the quickest way to safety is to make it to the other side. Or, like small animals, we can hunker down in as safe a place as we can find, trusting that storms do not last forever. Or, like trees, we can weather the storm in community, with others, knowing that together we are stronger. We, like the rest of creation, rely on our God to bring us through each storm. We know that though the storm is frightening, all storms must end. And we trust that though the world we face on the other side of the storm may not be exactly the same, it just might give us exactly what we never knew we needed. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive us of your guidance, those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Job. Then God spoke to Job from the heart of the whirlwind. Who locked the sea behind closed doors after it burst forth from the womb? When I wrapped it in a blanket of cloud and cradled it in fog. When I marked the bounds, it was not to cross and made it fast with a bolted gate. Come this far, I said, and no farther. Here, Will your proud waves break? The word of God. Thanks be to God. A proclamation of Psalm 63. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord. Thirsting for you, my God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord. Thirsting for you, my God. Thirsting for you, my God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord. Thirsting for you, my God. My soul.
from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. The love of Christ is overwhelming when we reflect on this. That if one person has died for all, then all of us have died. And the reason Christ died for all was so that the living should live no longer for themselves, but for Christ who died and was raised to life for them. From now on, we do not look on anyone in terms of more human judgment. Even if we did once regard Christ in these terms, that is not how we know Christ now. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old order has passed away. Now everything is new. The Word of God. Thanks be to God. Please rise, in body or in spirit, for the gospel. Gospel according to Mark. With the coming of evening that same day, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us cross over to the other shore. Leaving the crowd behind, they took Jesus in the boat in which he was sitting. There were other boats with them. Then a fierce gale arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat so much that it was almost swamped. But Jesus was in the stern through it all, sound asleep on a cushion. They woke him and said, Teacher, does it not matter to you that we are going to drown? Jesus woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Hush, be calm. And the wind dropped and all was perfectly calm. Jesus then said to his disciples, why were you so frightened? Don't you have any faith? They were filled with awe and said to one another, Who is this whom even the wind and the sea obey? The good news of salvation. Glory and praise to our Savior, Jesus Christ. first reading today we hear a small section from the book of Job which is one of the wisdom books. Job has it all in the beginning of the story. He has family, wealth, health, but he loses it all. The next 37 chapters in the book are Job and three friends discussing why evil happens to good people. 
Finally, God answers Job in a whirlwind. In a storm, God often appears in the Old Testament because that is where his power is shown and revealed. God doesn't specifically answer their questions, but today is the beginning of his answer, and it's more or less, where were you when I set limits on the sea, etc. How his might is shown in power over nature. He tells Job that your ways are not my ways. And essentially at the end Job says, oops, I will say no more. But this reading was chosen because it's showing God in the power of the nature of the sea. In the gospel today, there is another storm. This time it's on the Sea of Galilee. Now in 2013, we were privileged enough to go on a pilgrimage to the Holy Land, and we actually sailed on the Sea of Galilee. Now the Sea of Galilee is not huge like one of our Great Lakes. It's only 33 miles in circumference. But they explain to us that the way the winds blow through the mountains, they act as a tunnel, and a storm can come up very quickly and be very severe. Fortunately for us, we had great weather. But in the gospel, the storm hits the lake. Now to make it worse, it's nighttime and stormy. And the disciples, who are all experienced sailors and fishermen, get frightened. I think that gives me some idea how strong that storm really was. Eventually they wake up Jesus, who's asleep in the back of the boat. Jesus wakes up and he calms the storm, which is something that only God can do. Who else has power over nature? And he offers a gentle rebuke to the disciples. He goes, why are you so frightened? Where is your faith? I think that is a good question for all of us. Our entire world right now seems to me to be a whirlwind and a storm. There are wars, there is climate challenges, there is politics, there is gun violence. It's very easy to lose faith. But what we have to remember is that God is still in charge and Jesus is with us still. So we continue to have faith that God will triumph. We may not understand, but we persevere in trying to live in our Christian life with faith that God is ultimately in charge and God is with us. He may seem asleep, but he will wake up for us. Several years ago, the composer Joe Wise wrote a song about this gospel. It's called Jesus Was Asleep. I want to sing two short verses from it because it just first thing that popped into my mind when I started doing this reading. Well, it's worry and it's wonder how we're gonna get it done. Jesus was asleep at the head of the boat from the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun. Was asleep at the head of the boat, asleep, asleep, asleep at the head of the boat. The storm was a wailing 
when the crew was a praying, Jesus was asleep at the head of the boat. Plenty to do when your rest is through, Jesus was asleep at the head of the boat. Let him have the world for a turn or two, Jesus was asleep at the head of the boat. Asleep, asleep, asleep at the head of the boat. The storm was a wailing and the crew was a praying, Jesus was asleep at the head of the boat. Jesus was asleep at the head of the boat. Confident that our God is present in every aspect of our lives, let us join our prayers together for the strength and confidence to address the storms we encounter. For all those who serve the church, including those who work to bring healing and health, especially all mental health professionals, therapists, and psychologists, For first responders, that they may respond to emergencies with prudence and wisdom. For political leaders, may they lead our world governments with the most vulnerable in mind. For media outlets and social influencers, May they contribute to the building up and unifying of all people. For people who feel helpless, may they experience friendship and receive the help and care that they need. For all the victims of gun violence, and for the continued healing of the Rochester Hills splash pad victims. God of compassion, you care for all of your people, and you sent your Son to be the great physician. May we learn to rely on you more fully. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
the time we have. Teach us to be patient even as we wait. Teach us to embrace our every joy and pain. To sleep peacefully. And to rise so strong in every Most loving, loving God, God, we thank, thank you for our calling and for nurturing in each of us a disciple's heart, a heart that rejoices in your promptings, a heart sustained by your spirit, and a heart encouraged by the support and love of our sisters and brothers. God, you offer us new beginnings. Fill us with confidence in our work and may our efforts extend beyond the threshold of our homes, out through the servant's entrance, to a world so desperately in need of hope and healing. Dream your dream in us, that in this house church, your vision and direction will take shape in us, and we will be transformed by your Spirit. May your presence in what we do Encourage us to dare, and may solidarity and togetherness be our strength. We make this prayer in your name, with Jesus the Christ, and your Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join us for our closing song. Say